boys, I hope you're feeling naughty because we're about to break some rules. Lift the cloche. All right. Always sift dry ingredients. That's got to make a difference, surely, otherwise you get a lumpy batter. Well, I, I think, no, it won't make a difference. So today we're taking your recommendations and we are breaking some cooking rules to see if the old way is the right way. To test this theory, you guys are going to be making two batches of cupcakes. One sifted, one just dumped in. Do you want to be the control or do you want to be the rebel? I want to dump. Okay, you, you're the dump. I'll be the rebel. There are some bowls, whisks, spoon, and most importantly, a sieve. Get cooking. Butter. Butter. Sugar. Sugar. Mike, what are your assumptions when it comes to sieving flour? Well, the fact that a lot of the marketing around packets of flour say it's pre-sieved makes me think that it's a job that needs doing. So, before flour was as processed as it is today, it may contain husks or yep. bits from the field. Um, therefore, insects. In, yeah, insects. You need to be sieved out to be cleaned before cooked with. Oh, so it's nothing to do with actual just pockets or lumps of well, flour itself. That's where it started. It also is good for in humid conditions, getting out the clumps where the humidity has made the flour clump. The reason you can get sieved flour in the bag or the boxes is because there's no humidity in there. It can't clump in that environment. Oh, this is hard work. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I never sieve my dry ingredients. Ever? What, even when never. baking bread? No. The only reason I would think is like aerating it. Yeah. Like getting some air through the, the flour. I think a cup of sieved flour will be lighter than a cup of unsieved flour. And hence the aeration. Yeah. yeah. Right, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm nowhere near good. <laughs> this is where you can tell that James climbs mountains and Mike can barely climb a step ladder. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who's this coming from? At this point, I would usually add like a, a spoon, spoon of flour, flour just Stop to bring it together. Spitting. Yeah. yeah. Teaspoon of flour to bring it together, but again, Mike has to be sieved. Thank you. Yeah, spoon of flour for every egg helps it just not split. Two things. Sifting is potentially useful when used in a case where you don't want to work the gluten too much. Also, sieving flour is said to be easier to combine than mi when mixing ingredients together. So let's see if that's true. Okay, ready? Yeah. I'm dumping. Sieve the chocolate as well. I've definitely got some clumps, but it's more cocoa powder than flour for sure. Mine's come together pretty easily. Okay, should we go in with some vanilla paste? It does look smoother. No, why don't they look exactly the same? All right, let's get these in. Delicious. All right. Freshly baked cupcakes. Can we tell the difference? Sieved, non-sieved. Well, they look good. They look, look the, same. the same. They look exactly the same. How do they tear? Hotly. They are warm. How do they taste? Like, like, a, cupcake. like a cupcake. Okay, oh, oh, next one. <laughs> Important to point out, we are not bakers, but if you are, and you think this makes a difference, then comment down below. There are definitely no lumps in the unsifted one. I can't notice any difference whatsoever. So always sift the dry ingredients. You're gonna obey it, bend it, or break it. Gonna break it, I have especially all, in this instance. I've always broken that. Break it. Broken the rule straight away. Great Next one. Start. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I want to win. So I think the standard of food in this battle is probably gonna be some of the best you've ever seen in sort of food. What do I consider James a threat in this battle? Well, he left the role. I've filled Everell's slot. So now he's just coming in to, you know, help sell tickets. This next one might make people angry. Lift it. Excellent. Do you want to go for it? <laughs> Yeah, you read the first one. 
Don't cook steak from fridge cold. Bring in the steaks. Interesting. <laughs> Hi mate. No, you're not. You're not in this video. No, 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 no. Go sit down. Go sit down. Sit down. Sit. <laughs> there you go. So one of those is room temperature. The other, fridge cold. They're the same cut of steak. The exact same. I'm assuming fridge room temp. Yeah. Did the room temp one look like the fridge one when it came out of the fridge? Yes. It's very different. It's very different. It's relaxed. So what's, so it's, what's happened? Yeah. I'm guessing they were both backpacks. So that has yep. really like held its form mm. in there. Mm. And it's just come straight out of the fridge. So this is what the community are saying. Cooking from the fridge cold may lead to a less juicy steak. One. More likely to overcook the outside whilst undercooking the inside. Two. Some say the steak will become more dehydrated cooking from the fridge cold. And then finally, not sure about this one, less oil splatter as temperature difference is reduced. Fascinating. I think oh. steak, there are so many rules around steak. You could mm. do like a whole video around breaking the rules. Yes, yeah, steak With rules. steak. Okay. Okay, season with salt. Okay. Oil. Of oil. Yep. If I'm at home, I'm very lax with cooking rules, I'll be honest, and I'd probably just oil the pan. If you had Gordon Ramsay over your shoulder and you're under pressure, what would, you, what would your instinct tell you is the right way of doing it? I might oil the steak and the pan just to make sure okay, that you're going to get really even covering. Make sure Gordon's happy. Right, this is really hot, so let's get these in. Mm. But I generally don't cook steaks in like a screaming hot pan either. You're not? No, not unless it's really thin. But if it's thick enough, you can cook it on like a medium to a medium high heat. Get the colour that you want, but also cook it a bit more evenly. Bring it up a little bit slower. Mike, are you flipping? I can flip. I think I might Let's have need a to flip because it's, it's quite crispy. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, they're quite black, aren't they? Mm. So I think they both could have done with a little lower temp. And that's why I think if you're cooking the whole thing in the pan, you've really got to think about that temperature and not automatically yeah. think steak, screaming hot pan. You can cook it over a medium heat and it's fine. And that's why it's really nice to get a thicker steak rather than a bigger steak. So the same amount of time in the pan. Yep. We've now put a little pepper over the top. Leave them to rest for how long? Probably like four or five minutes. They look quite different. They do look very different. Mine looks drier and it's actually yeah. got, it's juiced less. It's, it's, <laughs> it's juiced less. It's juiced less. Which is weird because I have I expect that to be less cooked than that. Yeah. Mm. Um, this looks more appetizing to me. Yeah, Even though absolutely. that's more even, I think this is a nicer look. That is so rare. Wow. Thing is, by looking at you go, well obviously one's thicker than the other, but it's not that they're the same cut of meat, just one has relaxed. So do you feel like with a slightly different cooking technique, you could have got the fridge cold steak to a better finish? I'd have cooked this a lot slower and possibly in the oven because it's so high. It's, it's just, yeah, it's got so such a depth. Thick. First impressions? Stacey steak. Stacey steak. Still cold? <laughs> it's still tasty. It's still tasty. I wouldn't say it's as nice. It does It tastes less of steak. Yeah, yeah. It tastes. It tastes less. Yeah. Is it what you expected? We broke the rule, and it's proven that the rule's there for a reason. I think taking it out half an hour before you want to cook is ideal. It comes up to room temperature. It relaxes a little bit. This is probably too far the other way. Over relaxed. And taking it straight out, obviously, it probably makes it harder to cook because it looks cooked on the outside and it's definitely not cooked on the inside. The thing is, once you find what's right for you, just repeat that and perfect it over time. Steak is all about practice. Yeah. Like just cook steak after steak after steak and hopefully you get a feel for it and you have your rule, your personal rules as to how you cook it. Cooking steak at room temperature, obey it, bend it or break it. Obey it. I think obey it, yeah. Yeah. This one splits the room. Lift it. Never cook with cheap wine. So many argue that cooking with cheap wine is unacceptable. And many others claim that nuances of the fine wine are lost when cooking. Why do you cook with wine? 
it's that's to deglaze. To yeah. glaze is to add, yeah, depth or sweetness or acidity. I, I, I would cook with cheap wine. I can't. I couldn't bring myself to cook with a really expensive wine. So the arg the argument I always hear from Ben is, you crack and open a bottle of wine. It may as well be a delicious wine that you can enjoy and cook with. Yeah. I get but that. then Pavi goes, I always feel a little bit weird on pouring expensive wine into something going, I could be drinking that. This will be a fun one to test, that's for sure. I, I will buy two separate bottles of wine and if I'm not using the whole bottle of wine, I'll just put it in the fridge and use it next time. Yeah, that's not Ben. Even if it's a week later. Yeah, it's not Ben. I know. <laughs> right, let's make a red wine gravy. Boys, you have two Ebers portions of wine in front of you. <laughs> uh, we want you to make some red wine gravy. So we've got onions. Chicken stock. Oh, and two differently looking red wines. Tell you what, have a taste. Let's do a quick game of pick a premium. Flavour wise, what are you getting from each? It tastes like red wine. <laughs> I'm going to go with what James says. I think that's hard. That is hard. I think this one's a more expensive. One. I agree. There's more going on with this one. It feels more, it gives you more of the. <laughs> Boys, you've still got it. You've picked the premium yes. straight away. Yeah. The cheaper one is a six pound bottle. The more expensive one is a 40 pound bottle. Wow, oh, okay, wow. so okay. good difference. So again, when you're using this in cooking, it will be a little bit painful to pour it away. So without playing into people's preconceptions, do you want to do the bougie, I'll do the cheap? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We're making a red wine jus or a red wine gravy. You're reducing stock anyway, so you're getting your meatiness and probably some saltiness from there anyway. This, for me, is purely just for a bit of fruity acidity. In my day-to-day, -day, I can't actually use wine, so I will use vinegar. Yeah, like cider just vinegar. Just for like or... a touch of acidity. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, instantly you can see the colour difference. <laughs> <laughs> that went deep within me. <laughs> yep, so we're just making a quick gravy here. The onion is kind of just to carry the flour. So onion, flour, butter. We've added the wine. We're going to reduce it for a couple of minutes and then chicken stock and reduce that until it's nice and glossy. So some people in the comments are saying that it's not about the quality. It's about the sugar content or the how acidic the dish may be, rather than its overall flavour profile. I think mine looks darker. Definitely. And I think it reduced slightly quicker, perhaps. Yep. Well, in that case, it all comes down to the taste, doesn't it? Yeah. It's looking thick. Yeah, I think these are gravy-like. Yeah. Should we pour? Let's pour. First impressions? Yours is definitely more saturated. I'd say a deeper, darker colour. They were really different in the pan. Yeah. And I feel like as they've reduced, they've become closer. I'll get your face in there. It's tasty. For the short amount of time that we cooked it. Yeah. It's not bad. It's yeah. quite acidic. Yeah, the acidity at the back of both ends of your tongue at the end, yeah. just go ding. Let's go for the bougie one. Pretty different. It really is. This one is stickier. Yeah. Sweeter. It's definitely sweeter. The acidity wow. is far more pleasant. It's more rounded. Wow. It feels glossier. Yeah. I don't know whether yeah, does, maybe yeah. yours was reduced more or the sugar content in it meant that it's given that effect, but it's quite significantly different. Yeah. Even, even bearing in mind the price difference. I mean, you could definitely do something good with that. You could make that taste a lot better, but in its most basic form, it's a it's a six out of ten. That's with the exact same effort, but just a better quality of wine. It's probably pushing an eight out of ten already as well. Don't cook with cheap wine. Obey, bend, or break. I'm bending. <laughs> I'm tempted to break, but I think bend as well. Okay. I bend because I'd go a little bit more expensive than that. I think it's a good enough foundation and does what it needs to do for you to build on it. But it will requ it will require more effort and more skill. We bent, but we did not break. <laughs> Next one. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. 
Don't mix salt into burger patty mixture. This has been tested many times in our burger battles. Everyone seems to do it differently. But some chefs say that you have to season on top, not inside. Should you try it? Let's try it. Do you want to go in or on? Um, in? Ooh, great. I'll go on. <laughs> Make some burgers. So some of you guys in the comments were saying that when you season the burger throughout, there's a danger it becomes more like a, a sausage mix. In terms of consistency. Consistency, because you've worked the meat, but also the salt helps bind the meat together when it cooks. I'm a seasoner on a burger. Are me, you me a... too, me too. Yeah. I think because I like a thin patty, you really don't need to season the meat. You just season when it's in the pan and it's, it's done. People also say when you season on top, it doesn't affect the texture within the burger. People want the burger to fall apart in your mouth. That's, that's okay. Do I get to season as well on the outside or no? Nope. So I've got a note here saying that videos have been going viral of people throwing burgers against a tray, one with seasoning in the mix, one seasoned right before cooking. The one with the seasoning in the mix stays firm and bounces off the tray, whereas others break apart. Look at that. We've done a steak and we suggested no screaming hot pan. For a burger, I'd always say screaming hot pan. Right, okay. Yeah. You want to cook that outside as fast as you can. Go crispy. Before the middle <sighs> overcooks. Got me. Yeah, you want crispy. Oh. Yeah. What? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I think it's ready. Fine. Oh, you maverick. You nutters! That's an obeyer. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good looking bases. Very nice, don't they? No additional seasoning so that we can actually taste them. So one seasoned in the middle, one seasoned on top. The colour, they're still pretty breaky. Control test one. Seasoned. Mm, it's a tasty burger. They taste very similar. They taste exactly the same. <sighs> I've just tasted both the patties. I think mine tastes better. Tastes better. Not just because it's me. No, but as an individual patty. Yeah. So as you're tasting it again, can we remind ourselves of the definition of a rule? Rules exist as a oh. gui as guidelines to be broken. Rules are there for many reasons, either for, for somebody's safety, um, to help keep the world in order, or in some cases, just to make the best thing possible. Oh, I think you might be right. The seasoning throughout, tastes better, it's a better patty, but then that's because it's been seasoned throughout. I think in cooking, interestingly, rules are created by people who are trying to create the perfect product. Okay. And in day-to-day -day cooking, you don't, don't need to create the perfect product, you just need to create something that you enjoy. So the rule of don't mix salt into your burger patty mixture, you're going to obey it, bend it, or break it. Break it? Break it. The only rule is that it always has to be a double burger. Uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Double yeah. patty. Obey every time. that one. Well, what do you think of these rules? Should you break them, bend them, or obey them? Comment down below and let us know. Also, some more rules for next time to break would be great. <laughs>